Good morning. And uh, again, a warm welcome to our RCIA candidates, families, sponsors, and sponsors' families here in the front, in front of me. And we're going to be sending them to the bishop to be welcomed into the, into the diocesan church. And uh, we're going to ask them a couple questions in a minute. But the gospel, the gospel, I just want to, we have Jesus. We have the cloud, the bright cloud from which a voice comes. And then we have the voice of the Father. And we're supposed to know, at least on some level, or I'm telling you today, that the bright cloud is the same pillar of fire and pillar of smoke that led the Israelites out of, or the, the Jews out of Egypt and went ahead of them on their way to the promised land. So this is a Trinitarian theophany. That would be your theology lesson for the day. A Trinitarian where we have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and the voice of God speaking. And so this journey up the high mountain and the transfiguration, and Jesus gives the apostles, and particularly Peter, James, and John, a glimpse of his glory because he's going to come down the mountain and he is going to go and be utterly rejected and lied about. And, uh, and obviously he's going to be persecuted and killed. And this is a moment of, of encouragement for them and for us. Now, so this is my beloved son, listen to him. You know that listening to Jesus brings transformation to our lives. So I, I want to make this as clear as I can. We have a responsibility and an obligation to listen to Jesus. Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, the voices of truth, the voices of life. We have an obligation to listen to Jesus. Every single person, every one of us, you and I included, every person either advances in life up the hill by grace and faith, or we drift and float downward. Those are our two choices, to advance or to drift. And we are called to up the high mountain. In Christianity and throughout the Old Testament, we hear of the two ways, the way of the fool and the way of the wise man, the way of stagnation and the way of transformation, the way of death and the way of life. I put before you life and death. Choose life. The spiritually dead, comfortable, asleep, lukewarm, passive, not responding, or responding to the call of God half-heartedly. That description of the person who responds to God half-heartedly is lukewarm. Remember a moment ago I said, quoting the gospel, this is my beloved son, listen to him. In a passage from the book of Revelation, and I have quoted this passage a number of times. In the passage from the book of Revelation, Jesus says, various translations translate it differently, but I'm going to give you the most visceral translation. Jesus says of the lukewarm, Jesus says of the lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And not, not a happy description. And I remember back when I was a pretty new priest, actually, and I talked about the words of Jesus exactly the way I just said them to you, that when we are lukewarm, when we are half-hearted, when we kind of half pretend to live our faith or try to live our faith, that nauseates Jesus. And I said that, and there was a beautiful young lady who was married and her husband was more or less unchurched, was rather ambivalent about God, 
and he was at mass with her that day. And she came up to me after mass and she was not happy with me. And she said, you know, what my husband heard you say was that he makes Jesus sick. That's what my husband heard you say. And I'm afraid you've turned him off and he won't come back. And, uh, you know, and I thought about that and I, I can kind of fall back into the idea that, hey, I'm just quoting Jesus. I, I'm just, I'm just quoting Jesus. And there's a truth in that, right? Now I have to be pastorally sensitive of course. I have to recognize where people are in their journey, of course. I have to try to, as St. Paul would say, you know, be all things to all people that I may at least save a few. That's quoting St. Paul. But this idea that we're either asleep, half awake, kind of drifting along, and that that's okay, or we have to be engaged. We have to be on the way of life. That needs to be boldly held in front of us at some point, doesn't it? Now, I'm happy to reflect after several years have gone by that that young man ended up entering into the church and really becoming a pretty good Catholic along the way. So that has a happy ending, right? But the call to transformation, the call of come follow me does not always lead people to come. Sometimes they are turned off by it. Sometimes they look at the mountain and say, I'm not climbing that mountain. I'll be here. But let us be sure that Jesus calls Peter, James, and John up a high mountain and that he's calling us as well. St. Paul, in the reading today, I don't know if you heard this today. This is today's reading proclaimed to you minutes ago. St. Paul says to you and to me, he wrote this letter to Timothy, but that letter to Timothy could just as well be written to Michael O'Connor. He wrote the letter to Timothy and it says, Bear your share of hardship for the gospel. Another translation is, bear your share of suffering for the gospel. With, this is the kicker, this is what we have to know too, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. God will give us the strength to climb the mountain. Continuing the second reading from today, Bear your share of hardship for the gospel, for the strength that comes from God. He saved us. He called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus. So Jesus calls us. Jesus calls his closest disciples away with him to the mountaintop. You know, and, and I have mentioned this before, I have gotten to visit Israel. I have gotten to go to this mountain. I got to ride a bus up to the top of the mountain. And as I was riding the bus to the top of the mountain, I was thinking this is no easy walk. I think part of that walk up the mountain is part of the story too. Nobody gets to the mountaintop by accident. Nobody drifts to the mountaintop. Nobody floats lazily along to the mountaintop. We hear Jesus call us and we respond to that call and we follow him and we know there's going to be hardship and we know there's gonna be a challenge, but we also know when we get to the mountaintop this deliberate place that it's going to be peaceful, that we're going to have a good view, that we're going to be able to see clearly. And so Jesus calls Peter, James, and John away, and they get to the top of the mountain, and Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, the whole of the Old Testament is made present to them, and Jesus shone like the sun 
And the cloud appeared and a voice said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Let me say that again. This is my beloved son, listen to him. I have encouraged you all, those of you that are regulars here, I have encouraged you over and over and over again. Read the Gospels. Read them. Read them as if you've never read them before. Make a commitment to yourself. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read them through. Start over. Read them again. Get familiar with the stories. Get familiar with the voice of Jesus. When you come to Mass on Sunday, say, I know that story. I know that gospel. That one's from Matthew. There's a similar one in Luke. I know that. This is my beloved son. There's no excuse. We have it on large print. We have it on audio. We have it on Kindle. We have the Bible in a year. There's no excuse. I'll give you a Bible for free. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. You know, in the history of the church, in times when, the, when books were so very expensive and many, many, many people could not read, the lectionary was developed where the readings at Mass, day after day and Sunday after Sunday, we go through the Bible systematically. So come to Mass every day and you will hear the voice of God speak the gospel over and over and over again. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The apostles climbed the mountain. You know, my brothers and sisters, you and I, by God's grace, we have the capacity and the responsibility to be transformed. And it doesn't happen by accident. We are being called out of lukewarmness, out of half-heartedness, into an intimate, personal, mountaintop relationship with Jesus. Today, I'm going backwards through the readings a bit. The first reading today, the first reading today is one of the most important events in all of the biblical history, and that is the call of Abraham. Abraham is our father in faith. Abraham lived in his father's house till he was a mature man. And then he heard the voice of God and the voice of God said to him, go forth from the land of your kinsmen, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And Abram went as the Lord directed him. He trusted God. I cannot overstate the importance of this concept that in our life, we must listen to the voice of God, we must trust in the voice of God, and we must act. Abraham was called out of his father's house. And as soon as he left his father's house, he encountered famine and challenges and difficulty, but he was sustained in them and prospered through them by God's grace. My brothers and sisters, life has two versions. One is striving, joyful, journeying, driven, wrestling with God, knowing that life is short, recognizing that time is running out, knowing that we are going somewhere, a deliberate climb. That's one version of life. And then there is the cynical, the undirected, the pursuit of money, floating along spiritually, lukewarm on the spirit of the world. Jesus says, come away with me and climb this mountain. And so that is our call. Last Sunday, we talked a bit about fasting. This Sunday, we're talking about transformation and listening to the voice of Jesus. When we listen to the voice of Jesus, we will hear him call us to fast. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. When you fast, wash your face and 
and, and uh, make a good appearance so that you won't appear to others to be fasting. When you fast, so we are called to fast. That's part of that climb. Fasting, a deliberate act of self-denial in food or drink, an exercise of faith, causes us a little hunger. Someone will tell me, well, Father Mike, I'm fasting from cussing. I'll say, you should fast from cussing all the time. Fast from food for a while, okay? And climb the mountain. And you'll get a new perspective. You'll begin to see. The scales will fall. There's a transformation. Come away with me, Jesus says to us. So my brothers and sisters, on this second Sunday of Lent, we are called to transformation. These RCIA candidates are gonna choose a saint name. You know why we choose a saint name in the church? We choose a saint name in the church to recognize at the pivotal point in our reception of the sacraments, we're supposed to change. We take a new identity in a sense. That can be an empty ritual, or it can be a call, an awareness of the call to be transformed. I challenge you all here in front of me, especially the RCIA candidates who are going to be choosing their confirmation name, to think about the call to be transformed, the call to the mountaintop, the call to hear the voice of Jesus.